In today's show, we're looking ahead to Saturday's games in the NBA, streaming options, what I'm watching for, and also Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms and we're here ready to go, ready to put up our... Um, things that we're watching for. I guess that's what I'm trying to say for the games on Saturday. So let's do that right now. Starting with the Minnesota Timberwolves and the Philadelphia 76ers. Patrick Beverly is out for the next couple of weeks. I think that's a drop without an injury reserve slot. I think he's got to drop him. Malik Beasley won't start, but he will see more minutes. I think he's worth adding, just seeing what happens with him. Also, we also want to watch to see what his role is. Because remember, even at the start of the year when Beverly wasn't starting and playing limited minutes, Beasley wasn't useful. He became less useful when Beverly was rolling, but they were starting Russell Edwards and then Josh Okoge or McDaniels and Vanderbilt together. It wasn't Beasley and he wasn't getting 30 minutes a night. So don't get 100% duped into thinking this means 30 minutes a night and big usage. The reason why Beasley wasn't getting that is because you're fitting that usage next to Towns and Russell and Edwards was tough to do and it's still going to remain tough to do. They've got McLaughlin, they'll play Okoge, they'll play Prince, they'll play... Look, those guys are crap, obviously, but they will play because they fit more of the role than what Beasley does. So just watching how that all works, I think is going to be really interesting. And then same with Jaden McDaniels. Does he move back into the starting lineup? Do they go with Okoge? Is Okoge's back even going to be ready to play? Like that's going to be something to watch for in that game. While for the Philadelphia 76ers, we just don't know if Joel Embiid or Tobias Harris are going to play. They're both questionable. Um, Harris has missed the last two. Embiid's missed the last three weeks due to uh, his uh, COVID diagnosis. So he should be... I'd expect... This is always the expectation I had or over the last week, the expectation I had was that Embiid would play. So seeing how that goes. But what what impact does that have on Tyrese Maxey is going to be key. And then Danny Green, who's come off the bench behind um, Matisse Thibel last game. Will they keep Thibel starting? Will they replace Green in there? What do Green's minutes look like? There's a lot of questions about how this rotation looks with the return of those two players in particular. The Knicks and the Hawks playoff rematch. Um, for New York, we always want to watch to see what happens with Kemba Walker. This is a back-to-back. For the, Knick, uh, for the Knicks, I don't expect Kemba to play. There's also a chance that Derek Rose is out because he's questionable for Friday's game. Um, so we're watching Alec Burks and what his role is. What's his role in comparison to Fournier, in comparison to Roland Barrett? What do we do with Barrett? You know, where, where do Barrett's minutes go? Can we have one good game in the last three weeks? That would be interesting. So the whole Knicks dynamic, especially if we do have Kemba out, will be key. Like Emmanuel quickly could get a boost there as well. How Tibbs decides to run that is going to be interesting. While for the Hawks, the Italian cock Danilo Gallinari. Hands off my cock! He had been pushing up. We has been pushing up the last couple of games. So seeing how the Herder, Bogdanovich, Reddish, Gallinari minutes get distributed is going to be key. I don't think the Gallinari is a 12-team league player, but we want to watch that distribution. While Clint Capella playing at a much higher level at the moment. We're getting 30-plus a game pretty regularly which in terms of minutes, which is great for a guy that was struggling on uh, early on in the season. The Suns and the Nets. Chris Paul. He's been a huge, in fact, sheaf. What's he been? A surprise, to be sure, but a welcome one. Um, it has dipped a little bit, and the scoring's not particularly great from Paulie. So, yeah, can he keep these really high assists and really high steals going? I guess that's going to be the question. And Devin Booker, a guy that I've criticized in the past for being a low three-point percentage shooter, shooting guy, that's really up at the moment. His assists are also back up. He's putting up some very, very strong numbers, much better than he did last season. Well, for the Nets, I expect them to start LaMarcus Aldridge again and for him to get 30 minutes and for him to be a must-roster player. But how they utilize that bench rotation 
with the likelihood that Bruce Brown returns, like where does Cam Thomas fit in? He was first off the bench last game. So where does Thomas fit in? Bembry, um, Javon Carter, James Johnson. Like what does Cam Thomas's playing time look like? And does he become like an 18 to 20 team league sort of fantasy player? Guys, football is going. We've had Thanksgiving games. We're on what week 10, maybe? I think week 10 or week 11 in the NFL. The basketball's rolling. And the best place to place your bets for this season is at Bet Online, a new updated desktop, or go to their mobile site. Use our promo code LOCKDOWN. You can get a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. And it's not just football. Bet Online has pro and college hoops, NHL, boxing, and UFC right to your favorite Vegas casino game. So don't wait and take advantage of all of the great offers available for the 2021 season. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports. Bet Online is where the game starts. The Miami Heat and the Chicago Bulls. Everyone has a hero. True. Zero people shouldn't have a hero. Yeah, yeah. So Tyler Hero, um, I expect the high minutes and the high usage to continue. It's all about efficiency with him and how that continues. Well, I'd like to see Bam do something. His efficiency field goal percentage is down. He had a stinker of a free throw uh, game not that long ago. His blocks are absolutely non-existent. Like, can we start to see some improvements from Bam? That would be great. Well, for the Chicago Bulls, do they continue to start Javante Green instead of Alex Caruso? How do they manage that? What do what does Green's minutes look like? Who does that cut into? Does it impact Caruso? That's going to be key. And then can Kobe White actually look like an NBA rotation player? Because he really hasn't in most of these games so far. Do not worry with him in 12 or 14 team leagues. I'd like to see some positives from him, but we just haven't seen those. The Hornets and the Rockets. PJ Washington Jr. It is a back-to-back for Charlotte like it is for so many teams. And Mason Plumlee is actually questionable for the game on Friday. So we don't know if Mason's going to play, but what's PJ's role? His first game back, he played six minutes. Like, surely he's going to play more than that, but can he push to 25? Will that be useful enough for 12-team leagues? Like, I'm really intrigued as to how they're going to use him. Well, Gordon Haywood, it feels so hit or miss for this bloke. You get these 38-minute games, 35-minute games, big production, and then he has a zero-pointer in 25 minutes. It is up and down. He is obviously a must-roster guy, but... Finding some consistency in his playing time, I think, would be really good. Well, for the Rockets, we know that Jalen Green is out for a week with his hamstring injury. So who do they decide to start there? They have been starting Eric Gordon um, in place of Daniel Tice. I expect that they go with Garrison Matthews. They could go with Armani Brooks. They could go with a situation where they play Gordon at the two. Um, and they put KJ Martin and Jay Sean Tate in. Does Daniel House get another start? That makes me pretty ill, but that's a possibility. There's a lot of ways they can go. So watching Gordon's minutes, watching Matthews, but watching all of these guys to see how they're impacted, House and Nwaba and um, yeah, Augustine even, like so many different guys. And what does this mean for Kevin Porter? Does his assist go up? Does his usage go up in this scenario with Jalen Green out? The Magic and the Cavaliers. Jalen Suggs was able to help himself in that first game or that last game before Thanksgiving. Cole Anthony um, is not going to play Friday, but he could return on Saturday. So does Suggs, is Suggs able to maintain 12-team rosterable status? That's going to be interesting. While Mo Bumba, been impressed with Bumba. He's had some nights with um, poor field goal percentage and trying to work out whether it's him or Carter that loses out when Isaac returns is tough. But honestly, with the update today we had about Isaac and Fultz, I don't know when the hell is Isaac's coming back. I don't think it's Christmas. I think we're looking at mid-January, maybe All-Star break, honestly. And if you don't have... If you're sacrificing an IL slot for him and have someone else that can fit in there, drop him. If you don't have an IL slot, drop him. I just don't think he's going to be impactful enough, and we're still waiting for forever for this bloke to return. On the Cavs side of things, big news, Evan Mobley. Looks like he's going to be back. Now, the initial injury report was two to four weeks. He looked like he could be he looks like he could be coming back within the two-week time frame, which is awesome. He's listed as probable for this game. And then how does Mobley look <clears throat> with a full Jared Allen, Kevin Love, Lowry Markkinen. And how does Darius Garland look? Because Garland's usage has been way up. So with Mobley back, does that take a step back? How they all fit in their basically fully healthy team. No Colin Sexton, but he's not coming back. So how does the fully healthy team look? Is going to be really interesting for me. The Wizards and the Mavericks. 
Kyle Kuzma continues to get lots of opportunities, continues to have some poor games. He's been rebounding really well, but I'd like to see a little bit more from him. But we're still you know, a, a little bit of a way away from Rui Hachimura returning, unfortunately. And then Montrez Harrell killed us uh, last time out before Thanksgiving with the free throws. I expect he's still going to play his 24 to 25 minutes off the bench while Gafford starts. This is a back-to-back -back for them, so don't expect Spencer Dinwiddie to play. Um, and that's going to give boosts to guys like Hal Neto and Contavious Caldwell-Pope. While for the Dallas Mavericks, we know that this bloke, if you watched my earlier video today, Porzingis. he's been dominating. Um, can he continue that run? It hasn't just been because Doncic has been out. Porzingis has been playing really well alongside Luka. So how that goes. And then what they do with the big men. Dwight Powell was benched for Cauley Stein, but it was Maxi Kleber who got those minutes. I expect it to be Maxi Kleber again. And that is going to make it really interesting in terms of adding him in 12-team leagues. For the Pelicans and the Jazz, we want to watch Josh the Hitman Hart because he is playing at a really high level. He is a must-roster 12-team league guy. I do think there's going to be some drop-off from Hart coming at some point, but much like with some of these other guys like Isaac, like when the hell is Zion coming back? We still haven't got that update on his um, foot and the scans, which we were supposed to get two days ago. Hopefully that comes in soon. And then I expect Billy Hernan Gomez retains the backup center position over Jackson Hayes. I'm um, recording this before the game on Friday, so I don't know how he did in that one, but his two previous games had been really good. 22 minutes apiece in those games. Now, they were some blowout situations and foul trouble situations. I don't expect him to play 20 a night, but watching that will be interesting. While for the Utah Jazz, I want to watch um, Mike Conley, who's been playing, I think, really well this year. Really, really solid option for the Jazz. But more importantly, this is a back-to-back. -back. Does he play? I don't think he does. If he does, it's a bonus. But if he is out, the carryover effect, more minutes for Ingles, for Clarkson, more touches for Gay, more assist opportunities for Mitchell. So how that all gets distributed for Utah will be interesting. And then Rudy Gobert has been playing really well. The free throws have been sticking for Gobert, which is a huge positive. So let's see if he can keep that going. I have my doubts, but let's see whether he can do it. Guys, this is the best built sale that you could find. It's uh, Black, it's Black Friday. So we're talking the most delicious Black Friday that's ever Black friday -ed. New limited time flavors, new types of bars, and you can get 20% off everything at Built.com using the code LOCKED20. The Ruby Chocolate Puffs, man, bang. Ruby Chocolate, go. Go and get, grab some. They're amazing. The Lemon Dipped Cheesecake Puffs. If you love lemon cheesecake, you're going to love these ones. And then they've also got the new Built Crave Bar, which when you order a box of Built Bars, you get two free Built Crave Bars over the weekend. This is like a candy bar, but the no guilt candy bar. It's a great alternative to that bar that claims to satisfy. Caramel flavored chocolate loaded with peanuts, giving it a nutty, chocolatey, oh so sweet candy bar taste. And just 160 calories and 17 grams of protein. So no need to fight the angry crowds or camp out for hours. Just go to built.com. Use that code LOCKED20. Save 20% off. Get two free Crave Bars, but 60% off Built Broth and Built Boost and 40% off Built Swag. Just make sure you're using that promo code LOCKED20. Let's go and have a look at some stream options. There is no back-to-back -back Saturday to Sunday, so we don't have back-to-back -back streamers. For nine cat leagues on Saturday, we're looking at Malik Beasley, Maxi Kleber, Hull Neto with Spencer Dinwiddie likely out, Bruce Brown Jr., Cody Martin, Emmanuel Quickly with Kemba Walker likely out, and then Jinglin Joe Ingles. For deeper leagues, we're looking at Hull Neto, Bruce Brown, Campaign, Javante Green, Herb Jones, and Rudy Gay. And lastly, we go to points leagues, Beasley, Herter, Love, Kleber, Eric Gordon, Pat Mills, and Cam Reddish. Guys, that will do it for me today. Don't forget to follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app. Give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment on YouTube. Subscribe. Tell your friends. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.